Hi guys, welcome <laughs> back. Welcome. I'm just cleaning my, my specs up. <coughs> <coughs> Shut up, you. <laughs> just cleaning my specs. Right, I'm front. I'm still, oh, yeah, I did actually. I'm not going to apologise that I'm still on little pots because I did say I had these other ones to turn um, these bits and I'm turning them today. So I'm just doing some more little pots. So if you're not interested in it, guys, then I do totally understand. But I will be using some different tools because I said I'm going to be just going through my tools again on what different ones do. Now, I turned the other piece of this, which was slightly smaller than that, um, earlier. And God, look at... Mm -hmm. I mean, look at that. That's beautiful inside. And look at the grain mm -hmm. patterns on that. Isn't that beautiful, eh? That is beautiful. I wish I'd actually saved that one, done that one on camera, but oh, there you go, it's yeah. always a way. But at the moment, guys, I cannot make enough of these. They're, they're <laughs> selling so well. Do, do, you know, as I said, I've got a lady that takes the stuff and, and she's like, you know, she can't keep up, she can't, they're just selling straight away. She put, she's taking some of the other stuff and you, you put like the bigger bowls on the table and stuff like that, and they're still there at the end of the day. But these little pots, she, if, she puts, if she puts 30, 40 of these on the table, she's sold them by the end of the day and she's doing she's she's crafty woman <laughs> hang on she's crafty <laughs> she's crafted craft yeah craft she likes to do craft she does all the craft stuff and she <laughs> does like she makes some um, like um out of crepe paper stuff like uh, like a christmas cactus and things like that and she's putting them in the pots and she's just putting them there and i mean she's selling them cheap you know and they're, they're just flying out they're so pretty love them love these little pots little christmas cactus in it or a little i don't know i don't know to flowers i'm not that way i'm not a flowery person so there you go but anyway so that's what i'm doing I'm, i can't turn enough but i must say the ones i'm actually turning for her she has said look can i not put any finish inside them i mean she'd be happy if i just drilled them out and that was it because the inside's never going to be seen but if you wax it up she said glues she mm. has to use like a, a spirit or something to get the wax out because the glues don't stick as you'd all know glue won't stick to the, the waxes and stuff um but i said for the ones i'm demonstrating on here i'm just showing because it, it helps to pop the grain out and make it look nice and it's finished so there you go depends what you want them for guys so if you want them to put things in like flower things where no one's going to ever see it then obviously you don't need to finish the insides but I'm finishing them on these ones I'm demonstrating on video. Like I said, I've turned literally loads of them. I, I can't keep up, you know, really. I've turned loads and loads of them at the moment, which is very handy because I had so much of that wood that's, that's cracking and the U that's cracking. I've been able to actually cut it into small pieces and use that. And it's brilliant. Right, anyway, I'm, I'm waffling a bit. I'm, I'm going to mount this on. It's got a bit of bark missing there, so I don't think I'm, I'll, I'll see what the top's going to look like. So, again, I'm just mounting it on my worm screw on my sc2 chuck this is okay right that's it now it's only a small piece i don't really need to bring my towel stock up so i'm not i'm not going to i'm not going to make any mad i'm going to be standing here oh yeah 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 i'm going to be standing here so oh, you can't like come normal. creeping not can't, like normal i'm not normal <laughs> yeah, everyone not normal. tells me that you're just not bloody normal no like, no, no. I know. I know. I know that I live with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So anyway, I'm going to do a bit different because the other I've done with spindle gouge okay. and stuff like That's that. Cool. Um, this one I'm going to use an R2 chisel. I've got. Um, I've just got a few of the different chisels here. So all I've got, I've got um, short handled nine mil round. Okay. It's the same as the, the long handle one. It's just got a short handle. I like it because if I'm doing things like this. I don't need that the longer handle um so that's just a nine mil box hollower i've also got the nine mil which is on the spindle one okay that is a slightly shorter bar nice on the round it's not just for spindles it's lovely for doing things like this as well it's deep enough that'll get you down in there you can go in over half the bar really if you're using it right i've got the detail one on a round okay um just to do some bits i've also got the detail from the pen set okay so that's, I mean, this is, the, that's a bit grubby and what I said, this was this is about 10 years old, this uh, this chisel. So I think that cut is all right. It should should still be okay. Um, yeah, so that's what, and I, I said the R2, didn't I? Yeah. No, I didn't. No, you didn't, yeah. no. And I've got the R2, again, on a short 
handle. Okay, yes, this handle has got a little crack in it. That's been there since this was made up about seven, eight years ago. If I get handles when I turn them and they crack, I basically keep them for myself because I've got all cracked ones. I mean, this one, this one's all, all cracked around there. That's, that's about 15 years old, that chisel, and that's all cracked down there. <laughs> It's never moved, never opened up any, never done, changed nothing. Same as this one, six, seven years, it's never bothered it. But it's not nice, you can't really send it out to someone if it's got a crack in it. No. Wood, wood is wood, you know. Right, anyway, enough waffling. I'm not putting a twirly Tempt. bit up against it because it's Tempt. only small, so I don't think I need to. Yeah. All right. And I'm just going to turn another one of those little pots. And what I'm going to do is... Because sometimes you could hollow this one and it'll be absolutely fine and no tear out, no nothing. But then you could hollow another one and it'll have a bit of tear out on it. So we'll deal with problems as they come up and what tools I'll use for it as those problems come. So I might just have to grab another one, but they will all be tools that most of you have already got. Okay. Or if not, they're available. Or if not, they're available, yeah. Right, okay. So I'm just going to, right, I've got out on my worm screw. I haven't over tightened it because it will tighten a little bit as you make a few cuts. So let it spin up. And I'm just going to take some little push cuts with the R2, okay? Get the bottom sorted so it's flat. I can hear it. You can hear when it goes flat. Okay, so I've just put flat on with the R2. So it really gives a lovely finish anyway. Right, now I'm going to get some shape going. Well. Right, don't forget, get the tool rest, keep the tool rest nice and close. better for doing this than the square. Okay, I'll try to remove that tool, tool rest around a bit. Now, when you get round to this bit, you've got to be a bit more careful because your tool's on that at an angle. So you've got to just be a bit more careful. But keep the rounded shape so I'm not worried about the, the bump there at the moment because I'm not anywhere near where I want to be. I want to come around here and I want to take a few cuts this way. Now I'm just using the round for the moment. Right now again, people might think, well why, did, why don't I just push in here, like this, with the R2? Because this is still bolt orientation. And being this is going in flat, it can, a bit like your roughing gouge, still have a tendency to want to take a big chunk out, especially if it's not round, okay? It's not so bad if it's round, but when it's in, When it's on and it's this way, when it comes to this side, it hits there, it naturally wants to take that big chunk off, okay? So that's why I won't push in on this. Different if it was that way round, then that's fine, but not on this. 
don't know, you might get away with it, but at one time it might just go bang and grab you, okay? But you can come round and roll it, a bit like a skew. If you can get that angle, it's alright because it's going uphill there, it's on that butt, there's a, no, there's a rough bit there, it's still not round. See, and did you see exactly there? Because that's not round there, it's got a flat spot, what it's wanting to do, it's wanting to grab it and peel it off. That was actually a perfect demonstration of it there. And not only that, there are some, there's uh, the end grain there, so it's probably trying to grab on that. But I do want to show that it can be used like the, the skew to come round, see? So if you come round here, see, and you can get a lovely smooth finish right there. Now this ain't quite flat here, so it's going to try and grab again. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to use, I'm going to use the detail chisel get my foot, okay? Again, I'm riding the bevel there. Okay, look, the bevel, that bevel, look, it's in contact, can't cut. I'm not in a scrape, I'm not like this, I'm not scraping. I'm going to check that's all alright, yep, yeah. right, so I'm going to have that as my foot. So I'm going to come in and put the little dovetail like that, okay. And now I'm going to take a cut across it now, just to clean it up. Exactly the same as I would with a spindle gouge, just come in. To the middle. Well, I've still got a bumpy bit there. Well, I'm going to undercut it anyway. Not as much as that, I've gone a bit deep actually. That's alright actually, I'm going to leave that as a little hollow like that. That was done more by mistake than design, but it's okay. There, lovely smooth finish. Now quite a famous turner actually, once said, uh, I don't imagine you'd ever get a clean finish like that with a car by tool. Well, <laughs> don't let your imagination run too far away with you. <laughs> you suggest you can. Right, okay, so we've got our bottom done. That's gonna sit nice on that. Now I wanna bring that up. Now I can bring some of it up with this. But we're still not quite round here, so we're going back over to the 9mm. Rolled over, nice cut. Right, that's feeling nice. There might be a slight flat. So I've got that end grain, so it's going to be a bit feeling a bit funny at the moment but if we keep it all rolled over we'll get nice cut got all this coming off it's all nice right got a little bit just there I can feel That's it, got that. Right, I don't want this set, so I want that to blend. So by coming in and rocking my handle, means I can roll that edge and make it smooth. So that's nice now, that's come up all right. I can feel this top edge, I don't know what I've got really going on here at the moment. But it's gonna have a slight natural, natural edge or live edge. Right, now it needs a bit of a clean up on that, so what I'm gonna do, 
is I'm gonna let me just see how this cut is. Yeah, this cut is alright. I'm gonna use the detail chisel, just the one from the pen set, okay? Works with all of them. And I'm just gonna get a bit of a sheer cut going on, a bit of a clean up. Right now, like I said normally I'll drop my tool rest down and come around because this is a small one, it's a bit awkward this handle gets in the way. So I'm going the other way, okay? I'm going up. To where my tool rest will allow me. Oh, if I run out of bar, I'll run out of bar. Right, okay, there we go. Because what I want to do is I want to be across the top, okay? Now the reason I change there and I come back this way is because if you look at the shape of it, it's actually coming uphill this way. If I carry on and go down that way, as I get past that pump, this will want to run back. I need to cut my finger then, I didn't. It's very sharp. Really? Don't don't touch it with your finger. If I if I come back that if I carry on going that way, when I go past that hump and I get to there, this will want to go back that way. All of its own. I don't know why it just goes, oh no, I'm gonna fall off if it wants to run the other way. I don't know why that's what's gonna happen, right? So I come back this way. Now, I would actually like to have my tool rest a little bit higher so I could be right on top of the wood, but I can't. It won't, I've run out of bar in there, it won't come up that far. Lovely. One more little bit there. Right, and when you do that, you must be on the bevel. Oh, sorry, you just didn't know that. You must be on that bevel. So that bevel must be touching the wood. Okay, you must be on the bevel. It's not. It's not. You're not. You're not scraping like this. Don't use it flat. We're coming across the top. Okay. Bevel in contact like that. There we go. Right. That's uh, ready for a little bit of sanding. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, for this, I'm going to use the steel disc one for turning. I mean, this detail chisel, don't disregard it just as a little point tool. This tool can do so much, it really can. See, I'm not doing a lot, I ain't even changed my pads on I'm not doing a lot with the sanding. Okay, this is 320. a lot on that because that is such a clean finish that you can't do with a carbide. <laughs> oh sorry I should have put that light on shouldn't I? Now do you want the light on? Yeah. Is that better? Well, I can light on. Right, okay. 
Okay guys, here's a little hand sanitizer. So I'm going to get to the very middle. There you go, that's good with that, done. Right, we'll put a bit of sand in the on it. I don't always with you, but I'm going to today. Mm -hmm. Because it's a Sunday. <laughs> Yeah, that, this, this little detail chisel, I'm telling you, it can do some amazing work, it really can. It can totally eliminate, tear out, okay, on any bowl or anything, and it can hollow, it can give you a push cut, it can do spindle work, spinules, it can do everything. It's a fantastic tool, it really is. You know, I rate that, the, the same like as well with all of them, really, they all have their... They all have their day, they all have jobs to do. <laughs> you know, they're all, all, all tools. Bowl gouges, spindle gouges, shoe chisels, they all have jobs to do, they're all good. But that is a fact, that is so underrated, that detail chisel, it really is. I would put that on par with the little 6mm follower because that again is absolutely fantastic chisel you, if you use it properly look at the same in place Very light touch because I don't want to heat it up as you. Got wax. Right, there we go. Oh, that's got some lovely grain in it. It might be a little crack. I think there's a little crack in that. But we'll go with it, it'll be all right. There's a little crack just there. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a very little crack in it. No, we'll keep, we'll keep this one. Sorry? We'll keep this one. No, it'll be all right. Yeah. It's not, uh, I don't think it's going to open up. I'm going to take it off. <clears throat> it's just a demonstration one anyway, isn't it? It's yeah. just a video, so we'll see what happens. Right, that bark's gone from there, but I should still keep this bit of bark and that bit of bark, which is the important bit that I want to keep. Right, that sits nice. It looks like it's got a, a, a little crack to it. just they're not too tight that way it won't mark it that's it that should be enough I'm not gonna let's just no nah, that's it I'm not gonna over tighten it that's enough I'm not gonna do anything silly so I won't get any anything bad I hope <laughs> right let's uh get in here for following and uh, right okay I'm gonna just start I'm gonna make the first few cuts with the nine mil okay then turn it on all i'm going to do is I'm using it flat because all i'm doing is opening this hole up here to start off okay Okay, so this is the box hollower on the square bar. Exactly the same 
with the round with the round bar here. Works exactly the same. But the round bar's nice sometimes when you want to do this and you want to take these sort of cuts. It's nice because it's on a round bar, so you can just do that with it, you know, you can roll it. You can do the same with this, the square, it don't matter, you can still come in and do it like that. Okay, but it's just, it's nice on the round. Now, I do, um, I do do this square, the R2 and that on a round, on a spindle one. Now, I will only use that for actual doing spindle work, using it like a skew. I don't like it for roughing, because what happens when you come in to do this, is... Because it's on a round bar, it naturally wants to do that, right? So, that means one thing happens. You hold it tighter to stop it happening, and then you magnify everything that happens there, you magnify it ten times. My calculation's not actually mathematically <laughs> worked out. It could be eight, it could be twelve, it could be eleven, I don't know. But I just say, you magnify it, okay, by by at least 10. So if you get a catch, if, you, if you're holding it like this, nice and light, and you get a catch, it'll be, oh, got a little catch, it'll be nothing. If you're holding your chisel like this and like this, and you get a catch, that's bye-bye, that's gone, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Right, now, I'm going to use the R2 to hollow. And this isn't the square cutter, this is the R2, okay? It's got the very slight, very slight radius to it. But what it means is with the, with the, the full square, when you come down here like this, okay, it can get very grabby because you've got 14 mil cutter all hitting in one place. With this, it does tend to just, it's such a slight bit, but it just, it takes that scent a bit before it takes the edges. A little bit easier to control. And when you're doing this, and because we're on side grain, and we're pushing, you get a fantastic finish with it. It's a, a lovely finish. Right, now see this is where we're coming onto the flat and because this is U and it's it's quite knotty inside I'm going to open it up a little bit first okay with the 9mm now I could drill the hole if I wanted but I don't want to all I do is go in I've got just rolled that little bit. Remember, don't roll it that way. You'll get one evil catch, but you can roll it that way. Yeah, we'll go a little bit more in a minute. Now remember, be like, don't be aggressive, we're on a very small tenon there, we're only just holding it, I mean, if I actually stop that and twist it, I could probably turn that, you know, because it's, it's circle as well for not marking. I mean, Again, the perfect circle on your tenon, your hole, is more for a no mark. If you don't want any marks on it, you want to finish it with that. If you want it for gripping, it is not the best to have it a perfect circle. Now, it's a bit like a pair of pliers. If you want to get grip, it has to be serrated, it has to go teeth to grip in. The same with that, you want to grip, otherwise you've got to over tighten it. And then you're putting too much pressure on that might be a perfect circle, but you can still pop it off, okay? If you want it to hold tight and you're going to remove it, you don't necessarily want the perfect circle. I would not use it, me personally, as a perfect circle. 
only for if I don't want it to mark it, okay? Because like I said, if I stop that, I could twist that. And if I had to tighten it up so it can't twist, I'd break the tenon. Now there's going to be a couple of little lines there because obviously square, well R2, square is cut and I'm going around the corner so it's not obviously the best for that. So we've got a little pop belly shape on this. Right, we've still got to go down quite a bit on that. be probably around about enough. We'll see anyway. Clear that all out. Let me bring that round so we can see. Can you see that? I'm not blocking nothing am I? There it is. much got our depth but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it out a little bit okay get a cleaner finish on it a bit high for that one I had it a little bit higher for the R2 which is good because you're angling down slightly you don't want to be you don't want to be up and you don't want to really be dead but you just want to have that slight angle that way makes it a bit better bottom corner because I don't want it to be square. Sawdust in there. We could say shavings in there. Right, we've basically right. I've got my bottom sorted. Let's come for that final little. Right, okay. Let's get down there. Undercut. It's undercut in here a bit. A little bump there. Right. That's all good. Right, now just for finishing up in that, I'm going to grab on the, the negative rake, okay? Just to come in and get those cleaned up there.
Right, it's lovely and smooth, but again, as I said, that can be improved by coming across, when you come down, drop the handle. Yes, this is a negative rate, but it still helps to drop your handle. And when you drop it, it's got to be below the bed of your lathe, right down, okay? It, it just finishes it, it gives such a clean finish, it's, it's, you can compare the two, but I've got a slight bump just there on that middle. I'm going to go again with that. It's where it under uh, belly, it undercuts here and then I've got a bit of a, a raise, so I just want to, I don't want no bumps in it. Like I say, it's never going to be seen the inside of it, but I don't want any bumps. Right, so again, as we come down, come back, drop the handle. Like so, beautiful clean finish. Right, okay. Now, that was just a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take a little part of this front edge because I think it's gonna need a. I don't know because I haven't been able to look at it and see it, but I think it might need. Remember, ride that bevel. Look, I'm on the bevel. There's the bevel. Bevel's in contact there. All right. There we go, I'm just gonna soften that. That's it, done. Right, get a little bit of sanding on that. It's not the easiest to sand, because it's got a bit of a, like a top belly shape, but. No, so, let's give it some of this. Let's see if we've gone thin enough, we might want to go a little bit thinner there, I don't know. Nice and gentle, I don't want to build up no heat because there is already a little crack in this, remember. I might, like I said, I haven't got to finish it, but I might actually just to, just because it's like a demo in it, please, so. See what we've got, see what it looks like. That looks very nice, actually. Yeah. 
Where's that crack? Huh? Where's the crack? The crack? Um, no, I don't think it is a crack. I can't. It's not on the inside. It's just. Just what it is, isn't it? That's yeah. all alright. That looks nice. Yeah. Got a little bit there. I could have gone maybe a little, another little cut, but I'm going to leave that because that's natural, natural edge. That's that's fine. That's all right like that. That's got its. Uh... Oh, got bits. I don't know why these wood shavings always fly into my ear. <laughs> all right. Okay. That turned out. I'm sure it went in and not coming out. <laughs> <laughs> you saw dust coming out of my ears. <laughs> yeah. That's alright, that's lovely that. That's got where the end grain is here and these little knots, they're they're on the inside as well. Oh, they're beautiful. That's it. Look, all nice and clean the inside. Hang on, okay. Keep it there. Keep no, don't move it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, okay? Yeah. Alright, all nice on the outside. Look at that. Oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? Mm. Hey? You think with a nice little like Christmas cactusy thing or something inside that. Oh, that looks nice. And that does the. See, and that can be because that was. With that, that was the two ends. That that was a piece of woodwork. Well, it was like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that one was cut off, and it was slightly wider than that one. So I've got the two pots out of that same piece of wood, so we get that same pattern. Look at that. So that that will make a nice. Care. A nice little pair that, mm -hmm. so that will go, and I reckon they sell together those two. Yeah, sure. So those. there we go, guys. Yep. So that's that bit, and just I know we're just on the pots again, but it's just showing you a little bit more with the tools. You know what you can do with that that detail. You can you can get a nice sheer cut finish. You can get a a good finish with it. Um, I didn't need to take the push cut down today it worked fine and the net nine mil negative rake that worked fine as well on this one this little box hollower i don't i mean this is how your box hollow would come okay like that it'd be ground pretty much like that sometimes i knock mine back a little bit further depending on what i use it for if you use it just for going in and pushing in, you don't have to worry about it. If you like to run your bevel and run it round, you might want to knock your bar back a little bit, just on your sand or whatever. Um, like I say, it's very hard to do something to suit everyone, okay? But that's how your box hollow comes. On this one, what I did was I have actually taken a little chamfer off the side of mine there. Now, the reason I've done that is because this is this one is used a lot for, this is another little pot I've done, look like that one. That was done with the R2. I went square bottom on that one. Okay. That's really thin. Okay. That one was another one that was done out of these little blocks. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I did that one and that one's just got a, a square bottom to it. Now, with that, see, when you're coming down the side here on some of these, what happens is you'll find with a square bar, the bar will hit the wood. Okay. When you're trying to come in when they're very, very narrow like that. So if you actually take a little chamfer down the side, don't go too much, because you don't want to make that rounded. You want it to still be able to sit. But what it makes is, if I bring this down, I've got I've got enough of them, see, so I can have different ones for different things. Because what happened now is if, if I'm going that way on a cut, I'm okay, because I've still got plenty of stability. But when you're going that way, if something hits on that, it can you've got to hold it a little bit tight, because it will try and roll it. But being that I use it for, I always roll it over anyway, it has no problem to me whatsoever. And that actually gives you that little angle that you can do a sheer cut. So just take your cutter off, put it on the edge of your sander, your grinder, whatever. Just take make a little flat on the side of it there. And that just gives a bit of relief around there for when you're going down, down the side of a pot. And I've got it on the, I've got the negative rake on that one. And remember when you come out, when you're coming up with it, even though it's negative rake and you're using it, yes, come up, just drop that handle and come out. It Take a pass and just go straight back and forwards, okay? Feel it. Then take a pass, drop your handle and come out. Then feel it, you'll see the difference. You'll know straight away and you, you will never ever just pull straight out again. You'll always drop your handle because you'll know that's the finish you get. It will totally change the finish, totally. <laughs> it's a simple... 
these things are very, very simple. So getting rid of torn grain, treating that sort of thing. Very, very simple. It's just angle, angles, angle of the cutter, what angle it goes in. It's like grabbing, you know, that's why I use all these short handle ones because I don't need big long tools because if they're grabbing and they're doing this, it's only the angle of the cutter touching the wood. Just change the angle, it's the tiniest little bit. Sometimes it's just the difference from that, that flat will grab that. It's not even a, a 45, it, it's literally that much. Just stops it, doesn't cut any less, but it stops any grab. It goes the difference between holding your chisel like this and holding your chisel like that. That's the difference it can make. So anyway, right, that's that guys. Just another little video on another little pot. I'm probably getting bored with pots, but I'm turning those them at the moment. But I'm trying to do it slightly differently by using, using different tools for it. Okay, I've got this one to turn still. I'm gonna do that on the next one. Because of the size of that, I'm probably going to use a spindle gouge again on this, or I might even use a bowl gouge or a mixture of the two. And I'm going to turn this one, and that's going to be a slightly bigger pot, that one. Okay, so I will see you for that one. Toodle pip, guys. Bye, guys.